as followers of Christ, we experience something incredibly more. We can go deeper and deeper and follow him. We know that the sacrifice on the cross has given us freedom and salvation. And that's a love to be explored because it is bigger. It is limitless. His love has no end. Paul does say, I hope that you can discover all those things, the width, the height, the breadth. But I wonder if maybe he had a little smile on his face saying, you'll never discover it this side of heaven because it is so big. 90 years old. That's a long time on this earth. We are blessed as a family. I remember my sister and I chatting, and we realized that as Dad got older, 60, because, I mean, 60 is old to us, we thought, you know, another five years, another six years, we worried. We actually worried. And no one ever said it until we were in the car one day. And I said, you know, I'm always worried that Dad's not doing well. And, well, he's 90, still telling jokes, so he's doing fine. <laughs> still, at 90 years, it is a blessing to us. But the biggest blessing is the fact that he has spent all his Christian life experiencing the depth of the love of Christ. How, how high, how wide, how long, how deep is this love? It is limitless. But we need to discover that. We need to enjoy that. When Paul wrote this, maybe it was hyperbole. Maybe he really did believe that you could discover it. But I don't know that even 90 years is enough on this earth to discover it. To fully grasp that God loves us no matter what. Everyone here has sinned. Everyone's fallen short. It's a great verse, but take it to heart. Everyone's a mess up here. But there's one in our midst that is not, and that is Jesus. And he died for our sins. And there's no limit to that love. When you say the perfect took on the imperfect, that is love. Took that punishment. That is love. And as we explore that, we realize through a lot of situations, that love is poured out in ways that are so much further than just the cross. The cross allows that mercy to come into our lives, but once we get past that, once we believe, the cross allows God to come in our lives and we experience him deeper and deeper. His wish would be that we'd have the power to grasp God's love. I think it was a, a dream based on the joy he experienced recognizing his salvation. This is Saul who went and killed people who believed in this God. And now he's saying, I want to grasp his love. He, I am sure, understood God's love. But still was seeking it out to find more and more. So 90 years, 100 years, there is more of God to discover. We will continually be surprised by who God is and how much he loves us. I want to remind you of that because I think sometimes in our society, because we do not look at those who are older with the same respect that other societies do, we just say they've arrived and they're done. My dad ain't done. No, he's doing stuff. He's busy. And the naps may interrupt stuff, but that's okay. I keep saying to my dad, I said, you're 90. You've earned a nap or two. You can sleep in. That doesn't stop the fact that God is constantly showing his love to my mom and dad. But how do we experience that love? And I think we're here and we're seeing worship and I can hear you screaming and yelling and loving on God and feeling his love. But that's Sunday morning. It would be nice to stay here and sing. Well, not for us. I think we'd run out of voice. But it would be nice to be here singing every day, all day. But we can't do that. We have our private prayer time and we experience God. For some of you who have sat in a chair in the warmth of the sunlight I see here has come in in your room and suddenly it's something more than just that sun. It's the Son of God speaking to your life. But again, we've got to go to work and we can't just sit there in that chair. We have to do our daily chores. So how do we experience God's love? Those are great things. We get healed. Things happen. But the main way we experience God lo God's love is through others. Others show us the width, the length, the height, and the depth of God's love. It's demonstrated most often when obedient Christ followers go out and love on other people. As a matter of fact, maybe that's what's missing in the church. And here's the thing. I, I was talking to Phil a bit there. I think it, I'm finding that youth groups are real easy to put together. Why? Because youth are real busy. So you only have to do one night, play a bunch of games, read a Bible story, you're done. It's easy to work with young people or easier. 
my son's a youth pastor. You may not agree with me and it may hear it all the way home. But anyway, it is easier to put together a program to with people who are busy the rest of the time. So the church does a good job with younger people. With those who are uh, teenagers, those who are finding out what life is about, they're busy. Those who are getting out of college and university are trying to find a job. So all we have to do is throw a Sunday morning service, maybe once in a while a Sunday evening, maybe a prayer meeting. They show up, they don't. They feel loved because their life is so filled. The problem is, is how do we love on seniors? As a church, I think we fail. Not this church, when I say as a church, as a group of followers of Christ, as, as that group of collective, I call it, of Christ followers, we have left the old people out of what they need because they need more than one night a week. We experience God's love when it's demonstrated by other Christians to us, most of all. When it's sacrificially demonstrated. When we, when we go out there and we interact with this demographic, it's the most difficult. And in this church, it is aging and it is going to be difficult. You need to be there for one another because God's love is demonstrated in those little things we do. I'm putting together this sermon. I'm saying, okay, what are verses about old people? You know, I, I'm just thinking now when we were growing up, a, a guy who hit 75 was amazing. And that was the average, I think, time when women were dying. All of a sudden it was 80. My dad is out of the ordinary, but not that much anymore. People are hitting 85 and 90 now, and they're not working past 65. How do we deal with these people in a loving way and make their lives meaningful? So I looked up a few verses on older people. You can decide whether you're in that category. Isaiah 46.4, even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he. I am he who will sustain you. I am he who made you, and I will carry you. I will sustain you, and I will rescue you. Sounds great. But I'll bet you for some of our older people, sometimes it feels like they're not being sustained. They're alone. So I look at that and say, God's there, but how does God want to accomplish that? So the verse doesn't help me. I can't teach on that verse how to deal with older people, with seniors, and love them the way the Bible says. There's another one here, Psalm 71.9. Don't cast me away when I am old. Do not forsake me when my strength is gone. There's a verse about older people, but it's a prayer. And I don't know that you use those words, but I'm sure there are some times as we age, God, my body doesn't work. Please take care of me. But it still doesn't instruct us as a church. So we've got one thing that says God promises to take care of us. But we're not sure how that works. We've got one that says begs God to take care of us. But what do we do as a church? So I approached it differently. Let's look for situations where older people are involved. 1 Corinthians 7, 8 through 9. Now to the unmarried and the widows. Widows works. Unmarried could be young, but in my mind, and maybe in Bible times it was different. And have the medicine. You know, you got a... a uh, something cut and you got an infection, maybe you died, so it may have been younger people, but widows to me are older people. So this is a good verse to say, hey, we got instructions to what to do with the widows. It says, I say, it is good for them to stay unmarried as I do. Okay, works, I guess. But if they cannot control themselves, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. I'm looking at the verse saying, okay, young unmarried people, I'll burn with passion, that's fine, I'm comfortable. But then I go, older people burning with passion. Widows, that's disgusting. That's gross. <laughs> that's my parents you're talking about. Look, I don't know if you know, but my sister and I are adopted, so we know my parents never burned with lust at any point in time. <laughs> it never happened. They behaved themselves, and all that giggling coming from the room, you know what it was? My dad was telling jokes. Sadly, I've heard his jokes, and he wasn't telling jokes because they're not that funny. <laughs> as uncomfortable as it makes me to admit, my parents would have a passionate relationship. And it may change over the years simply due to physical abilities or even desire, but it's still passionate and loving and caring. They are older versions of me. They, are like I, they were like I am, and I will be like they are. And as a church, if we don't grasp that, we treat them as something different. We need to realize, yes, they didn't grow up in the same time frame as we do, younger people. Their idea of technology is they're just excited to go to a cash register and go beep, beep, beep. <laughs> My mom has an iPad there, which uh, every time we come up, we reset whatever needs to be reset. 
I'm not sure what messages she sent to you, but some of them are totally inappropriate because they were for me. <laughs> hi, honey. Hi, darling. <laughs> so her understanding of technology is different, and yet in our culture, we actually engage in technology. So we need to understand they're the same as us, but they approach life a little differently. As a collective of Christ followers, as individuals, we must recognize that seniors are older versions than us if we're going to serve them. I think we have looked at them as a different species. They're different. They don't run around and want to do this. They're tired. So they're not like us, but they are. They are slower. Their bodies may have slowed down. Technology may have changed, but they are older versions of us. If we're going to reach the community, if we're going to deal with the seniors in the church and outside the church, we need to love them like they're just like us, or we end up not spending time with them. We need to recognize our lives are so full. We have friends around us, or at least co-workers. They often don't. So they're just like us with the same needs, but not the same opportunities. If a church, if people treat these old people as someone to pat on the head, someone to shake the hand as they come in the door, and someone to ignore for the rest of the week, we do not serve seniors. I hate to tell you the baby boomer bubble's coming. Most people are going to be seniors. That is a tough one. I personally am a senior if there's a discount involved. I don't care what age I need to be. 75, that's me. Look good. They pulled everything back and put some silicone. I'm fine. Give me a discount. But we still don't know how to treat seniors. We know in a way how we must approach them, but how do we treat them? How do we deal with them, and what do we do? Even though we accept they're just like us, which gives us a, a, a springboard, it's still not instructions on what to do. So I'm going to read verses to you right now that I'll bet you've heard a hundred times but never thought of seniors when you've heard them. These are incredible verses that actually apply to seniors, and I think you're going to find yourself going, yeah, wait a minute, these, these verses are more metaphoric than they are literal, at least for us in this time. We're going to Matthew 25, 35 through 40. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous, that's us Christ followers, will answer. Answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When do we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of my brothers of mine, you did for me. I mean, I've read that a lot of times, and I've used it in sermons about outreach. And I've forgotten that those words apply to people in the church. One thing I have discovered the church is going to be terrible at is dealing with its own people. We go out there and tell them, you got to become a Christian. We're the loving group. We're wonderful. Come in. And they come in, and then we go, you got to go out there and find more people to come in. It's like a pyramid scheme. <laughs> you tell them it's loving, but you've got this thing where they come in, and we don't seem to love them anymore. With this growing group, when seniors come in, they will not see us as sincere if when they come in the doors, all of a sudden we're selling them timeshares in the next program we're doing. How do we reach seniors? We reach them where they're at. We love them where they're at. And whether they're outside our door or inside our church, we treat them in this way. So if we remember they're just like us, maybe we should start saying, what do I want when my body slows down? I'm 52. My body is slowing down faster than most. I went through the last four months, I, I, most of the time in a chair. Couldn't walk. My knee was so bad. I could make it to the car sometimes. Then my shoulders got bad. Some health issues happened. I quit, couldn't raise my hands. And I did start to think at 52, do I want to make it to 90 because my body's already given out? Now, it will probably heal. But it reminded me after four months that long, first of all, God's in control because he chose not to immediately heal me. I don't know how stupid I am, but I've got to figure out what he's trying to tell me. I told him I'm stupid. Tell me. Spell it out. But what I'm saying to you is some of you have gone through health issues at younger ages and are starting to recognize that's what older people go through. It's just more permanent. 
So how can we love on them? When I was stuck in that chair, or I got a chance to go out and drive around to appointments, just my physiotherapist was my friend. It was company. <laughs> I can't get a word in edgewise with him, but, I, you know, it's, it's fun to have people around you, so people that will listen. I started to recognize when you're alone, and even when you're married, that it really hit me. My parents are together all the time, but it's nice to have a fresh face to talk to. And we've got to recognize this as a church because this is how we reach people. It's the basics of life. Sustenance and company is what we were designed for. As a matter of fact, sustenance at the same time as company is great. We eat together. It says, you know, seniors, it says, when you didn't have food, you fed me. And I don't know in this church what the average income is. But I would suggest that many of you have no problems putting somewhat of food on your table. Do we ever think the seniors have problems making that food? It doesn't say, I had no food and you gave it to me. It says, I was hungry and you fed me. So what if we took that a little more metaphorically and said, our seniors may need a meal made or two or three just to shove in their freezer for those days when the naps need to be all day long because they're tired out. It says, you know, I was in trouble financially. Maybe they need help paying their bills, but then we think to ourselves, well, they have enough money. Well, maybe we need to go in on the computer like my sister does and pay the bills for them because it's easier than going to the bank. Maybe we need to drive them to the bank. Isn't that a great way to be sacrificial and love on people to help them take care of their day-to-day -day things? In a rich com country like Canada, we always look and say, well, we need the homeless person. We need the guy in prison. We need the there are people here whose bodies are imprisoning them. Why can't we love on them? You want to see God's love demonstrated? You want to see the depth and the width, how big God's love is? Live it out in your lives. Look at these people and say, they are limited. How can I love on them? I'm not doing this just because my parents are here. Every church needs to know that we're messing up with our seniors. And this is a striking fact that I deal with every day, and I deal with even more on my dad's 90th birthday. They are the closest to heaven. We need to make sure we're reaching out and loving on them so they are going to heaven. And then when they come in our churches, we need to love on them so they are loved into heaven rather than alone. I don't know why, but we don't respect our elders and we don't love on them the way we should. I am impressed with the church because as much as my sister's up, when she can't be up, there's a drive to church. People are here taking care of people. But I want you to remember, these are people who have been in the church a long time. Are we missing someone? Or are we taking them to church because church is an event and Monday they're alone? I don't know. Parents seem happy. I don't ask them. But let's look at how we treat our seniors. They're different than us in the sense that they're not youth. They're not busy. So let's love on them. There's a limit to elderly life. Bodies become prisons. You don't need to go and visit someone who's murdered 10 people to go to the prison. You can go to a senior's house where they can't get out and love on them. And they recognize it. They see it because they see the difference. They see God's love walk in the door through each one of us. That is the height and the depth when we sacrificially take time out of our lives and love on people. I'm the first to say I, I messed that up. But I have found people who were seniors or had other issues, had a chance to walk into their lives, and they see God's love, and it's changing just by showing up. I have a friend who's a widow. Two friends, actually, they're widowers. Both of them are in their 60s or lost their wives in their 60s. One just turned 70. Strange in our time period. It was very normal in the past. As a matter of fact, childbirth often took the woman's life in the past. It's different now. But just being their friends, I didn't do it to do anything, but we're friends. I just love them. We talk about Jesus. We talk about politics. We talk about the late, latest game, whatever that is. One of them doesn't like sports, so we have nothing to talk about. But the whole point is you don't recognize how much you love someone until you take time of your day and just sit and talk to them. That is the love of Christ. How simple. Can you guys talk? Anybody here talk to people? You don't need a theological degree to show the love of Christ. You need to be loved by him, which we are, and we need to express that to other people. I think we missed it. Church is great. We experience God. We're done. No. 
others experience God when we go out of the church and love on them. I think the thing that wraps this all up for me is what Jesus said. I keep putting my Bible on the opposite side of the lock. In verse 40, Jesus said, The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of my brothers of mine, you did for me. We use terms like God is love. So how do we do stuff for God? We love. It says that they'll know we are Christians by our love. I'll tell you right now, most churches don't love enough for outsiders to think they are Christians. You're stuck with the old people. Sorry, you're stuck with them. Or they're a joy and a blessing and an opportunity to love on them. The least of one of these, the vulnerable. Who is vulnerable? Those who can't get things done. We look at it, the child, or we look at the person with special needs, and we forget that our older people need the, that service, that selflessness, and that love. And God commands it. Take some time out. Show them the width, the length, the height, and the depth of his love. Especially those who are often left out. It's sacrificial. As a matter of fact, it's radical. Because there's good TV shows on. There's things to be done. Really. Think how much time we spend in front of our TV, and, and me included. There's great TV shows on. What the heck would I want to go out with old people for? It's sacrificial. And we have PVR anyway. I don't know why this is so difficult. What has happened to us? Why have we not loved on people? Why do people not experience God's love that way? Because we're too busy with lives that mean nothing. We need to love on people. And I want to urge you with seniors, because I do look at the age here slowly slipping upwards. And I know you want to reach people, and we always say, as Phil and I were talking about, get the millennials, get the millennials, bring them in. Millennials become seniors, and if we're not good at the ones we've been given, we're not going to be good with the millennials. Let's love on one another. Let's go out of our way. Let's make a difference in the world we have here that God has given us. Because people right here need to experience sacrificial love, which is the love that Christ offered. Think about it. What I said was we need to understand that seniors are just like us. What did Christ do? He came down, took on being a man, and understood fully what we're going through. So like Christ, we need to understand what seniors are going through because they're just like us. So he became like us, and we had a need that we could not fill. And he went to the cross, and he died. I think that's pretty amazing. So there are needs that people can't fill. Why can't we be like Jesus and love just like Jesus and fill those needs? It's a challenge. And I understand standing up here, I'm saying stuff, but I'm a failure at it. I, mean, I try to visit my parents as often as possible, talk on the phone. But I fail with them, let alone the people that are around me. Maybe it's time to put down the remote control and demonstrate God's love to those who need it most. The song we're going to finish with applies to any age group, but I've noticed in seniors a pain that comes through. Their view of themselves goes down. Can I remember my dad saying to me, oh, I always have to take a nap. I said, so take a nap. But think about it. For those of you who aren't taking naps now, you may want one, but what have we been told by the world? You can't take a nap. Be busy. Do stuff. And there's that sense of failure, that sense of I'm not worth anything. But God doesn't see us that way. We need to see ourselves through the love of God. God's love is immeasurable. We can't tell where it ends. But when we see ourselves as unlovable, as, as failing bodies, we lose the opportunity to enjoy it. So I want to urge you to listen to these words as we sing them and recognize that whatever you think of yourself, whatever you think of where you're at, the way your body works, the way your mind works, God sees you differently. God loves you. And we need to love you too so that you can see that love.